डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम अभिनव कुमार चौधरी आई एम अ यूथ एक्टिविस्ट आई एम कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ ग्लोबल यूथ कमिटी आई एम फ्रॉम नेपाल आई हैव बीन वर्किंग ऑन इंटरनेशनल यूथ एक्टिविटीज फॉर लास्ट सेवरल इयर्स आई स्टार्टेड माय जर्नी टेन इयर्स बैक स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम बांग्लादेश आई स्टार्टेड माय जर्नी नाउ आई हैव कंडक्टेड सेवरल इंटरनेशनल इवेंट इन माय करियर uh not talking too much about the program i would like to uh, brief on today's program on webinar with youth of africa i mean all the friends you know that we are going through this pandemic situations we all the all the group is um, worried about the uh, post covid situation or you say in the during uh, covid era the people are very much worried about how we can tackle with covid 19 is it going or is it not going if not going how we are coping with covid 19 how will have to um, how will have to survive with covid 19 so in today's episode last time we did uh, our first episode all was on nepal bangladesh uh, youth then we have uh, we webinar with youth of bvi and bangladesh bhutan india nepal then we had uh, webinar with youth of bimstake countries then we have a webinar with youth of south asian countries and then uh, today we are meeting with the youth of africa african countries so uh, today we'll be talking on how their country is uh, coping with uh, covid 19 how covid 19 is uh, situation is the, in their country how their government is a uh, government strategies are to, to fight with the covid 19 and how they are mobilizing with youth so not wasting too much of time um, uh, talking my, myself only i would like to request mrs sumaya jafri sumaya jafri to uh, mm, welcome all the guests today uh, she is a student of uh, leadership at uh, university of dhaka uh, she is um, also a prominent youth activist in uh, bangladesh and she has attended many international organizations uh, events so sumaya it's up to you i would like to request you for to welcome all the participants here well thank you so much uh, hello everybody i'm sumata hamid zafrin uh, from bangladesh may have the honor to welcome all of you in the webinar with youth of east africa we have the speakers from continent where we just have few information but it's really great having this opportunity to learn from them Today we have among us few renowned personalities to take part in the discussion. Let me introduce each of them. Olio Vasia Ajala from Nigeria. Gershan Jagaba from Ghana. Peter Man Peter uh Peter Bando from Zania. Dr. Fatima Islam Muhammad Somalia. Rodha Nakudu, Kenya. Narendra Prasad Joshi, Director, South Asia Partnership, Nepal. Sunil Kumar Manandharf, former Environment Minister, Nepal. Abhinav Kumar Choudhury, more director, Nepal. Hope the participants will have good time and learn a lot of new things. So, without further ado, I'd like to hand over the floor to Mr. Abhinav Choudhury for conducting the rest. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sumaya. Uh, thank you for your warm welcome to all the participants. Now, um, I would like to request Mr. Peter to talk on how Tanzania is doing. Tanzania is a stable government, is well known for the vast wilderness areas, uh, especially in terms of natural beauties. So, uh, uh, Peter, can you just uh, say how East Africa? is doing with covid 19 and how the government is mobilizing youth of uh, um, of uh, tanzania and east africa uh, to cope up with this covid 19 situation thank you over to you peter oh thank you so much uh, i hope everyone can hear me very well right hmm. is can you hear me yeah yeah we are hearing you Yeah Peter. Yes. Hello. Yeah yeah. Uh, yes, we 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 
with regard to COVID-19, Tanzania has been doing well, especially in mobilizing youth in coming up with uh, innovative ideas uh, on how to curb the COVID-19. And we have uh, several meetings with the African Union uh, and the, the African Union envoy, and also as well as uh, regional East African community, uh, the regional meetings. So up to now, we, we had the CSOs, uh, civil societies, NGOs, uh, coming up with ideas and the personal, personal or in the individuals and the companies and the corporations. Uh, the only thing that which we did in uh, Tanzania First of all, is to, to, to stabilize mental capabilities of our citizens and to mobilize youth to take actions, uh, uh, healthy actions which were being given by the Minister of Health and even the World Health Organizations to curb the COVID-19. And fortunately, up to now, we don't have lockdown and we have never been in even partial uh, lockdown. And uh, our government now uh, is emphasizing all people to keep working and to take measures which were being emphasized by the Minister of Health. So, uh, overall, in my country, everything is okay and we are moving and from uh, here, here to another place and we are free. Actually, we are free, but we are taking care of ourselves. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, that's what was my contribution from Tanzania. That we are we are not in a lockdown. We are taking uh, measures to protect ourselves from COVID-19. We are moving. We are working, and no one is is forced to 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 be in a lockdown. That's how Tanzania is is, is managing uh, COVID-19. Yes, uh, Peter, I will also like to hear like how East Africa is doing, how about situations in other countries like Somalia, Kenya, DGBT, uh, Ethiopia, those countries. Can you just share a bit that how... Uh, one, two, three, two, three, two, three. Oh, actually, uh, concerning the regional eyes, uh, especially in uh, East Africa, from, uh, uh, from Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, we have different measures. Each country has it, it, its own approach. Uh, regardless to our East African community, we we don't have actually a direct cooperation on how to tackle this issue. We have direct, me uh, direct measures only uh, 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 according to how the country is approaching the situation. But in Tanzania particularly, we are not forcing people to go into lockdown. But in Kenya, uh, in Mombasa and in Nairobi, they are in partially lockdown and uh, sometimes it was totally lockdown. But in Uganda, they are releasing now. There will be no lockdown, but people, they should take care. And uh, in, uh, in Rwanda, uh, the same thing. And in uh, Somalia and uh, Ethiopia, they are also taking measures. But there is partially lockdown in those countries up to this time. And we are sharing information every day, whatever is going on in our region. Peter, thank you for your information on how um, uh, Tanzania is doing and how the East African countries are doing. It's good to know that um, despite not being in lockdown, your government is trying much to um, uh, to fight with uh, COVID-19. Thank you, Peter, Peter, for joining us in this important program uh, today. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Mrs. Roda. Thank you. Dudu. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah. I wish you all the best because I'm going to hold up another meeting. Yes. Uh, after 10 minutes, so I have yeah. to prepare myself. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you, Peter, for joining. Rest. Thank you on oh. behalf of today's uh, organizers of okay. the program. Okay. I okay. hope Thank uh, Thank we'll you. be doing best in the coming program. Thank you. Yeah, we, um, Mrs. Roda, uh, Roda Nuduki, uh, she's from Kenya. I would like to welcome her 
to this uh, to today's program roda can you hear me last one roda last yes and hello okay uh, to see see inform us that uh, a net uh, a bit due to uh, rain uh, network uh, in her area is not so good so roda I'm, am i audible to you okay um now i would like to ask my friend um oluase azala to uh, azala to um, uh, to give his uh, remarks on how youth uh, of uh, nigeria is helping the government and how the government is strategically fighting with covid-19 in nigeria and uh, nigeria is in um, west africa but it's good to hear uh, from um, from a well known speaker and my very good friend azala whom i met one year back in delhi and then very sooner in bangalore so azala now um, i would like to hear from you about how nigeria is uh, doing nigeria has many natural landmarks and wildlife reserves protected areas such as cross river national park and uh, yakari national parks as well so uh azala um, i would like to hear from you thank you so much thank you for for having me i i am happy to be on board to be to be on this webinar and i so much appreciate the introduction i say thank you so much first of all um the covid-19 situation in nigeria is getting um uh, the numbers the numbers of cases i get are getting like i getting rising every day are coming up every day however the youth in nigeria have step up their what we call their activities and are deeply involved in uh tackling the issue of covid-19 in the country for example you can see a lot of ngos a lot of youth led ngos in the country that are taking initiative their own without any government support going into the disadvantaged communities giving people free uh face masks giving people free hand wash you know um giving people sanitizer sanitizer and you know distributing foods and um uh palliative during the lockdown and still they are still engaging in 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 these activities so what i can say is that the youth in the country are taking the bold step you know and um of recent there was um a case a case a case between one organization and the nigerian government because the organization feel like um nigerian government received a lot of donation from like the un au um you know to keep the citizens under lockdown and to share um what we call palliative to to these people but they feel like okay the government did not do a lot so they are kind of um taking the government to court and so that the government should give them the receipt of all the expenditure so i think this is something that um that we could say that it's it's a sign that the youth are quite aware of um being the integral part of the community of the country and trying to like take a bold step to challenge the government and to 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 make the government do the right thing at the right time so um for example there is still a lot i remember there is an organization i uh, forgotten the name the what they did was to you know to like okay uh they set a goal that okay as an organization we are going to raise money and we are going to facilitate so testing for the disadvantaged people because you know majority of people that still have the opportunity to get tested about covid-19 in nigeria are the elite class you know the rich people yeah the ones that have the opportunities to get tested the poor are still trying to like you know struggle and 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 that is one thing that that is one thing why the numbers the numbers of cases in nigeria is still low because um the test is not that um sufficient enough quite a, just like a little number of people a, 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 it's not uh three quarter of the population has been tested you know so so we can even say right now the number of people that are carrying the covid-19 in the country we can't say because the test for now is only for 
It's only the rich people that have the access to the facilities. So this organization feel like, okay, what we want to do is to help the poor, those without the money, to get tested. And, and, and they are doing a lot. They are trying to, you know, get these people tested and get them to, you know, and, and, and yeah, and they are trying to uh, get them tested. And also, the youth in Nigeria are playing a healing role as well. Like, a, a, I, I should put it in a way, like, they are trying to make um, the COVID-19, you know, be be as simple as possible. You know, because people, the notion about COVID-19 is very bad. People think COVID-19 is like a death sentence. Like, once you have COVID-19, you are sentenced to death, which is not so. So, we have youth in the country that have the, that have the infection, and they are now okay. So the youth, this, this, this kind of youth took on to social media to, to share their stories and to tell people in the country that you can have COVID-19 and that you can get cure of COVID-19. So we have um, young leaders, both male and female, sharing stories, telling people that COVID-19 can be cured and COVID-19 is not dead sentence so i think um narrative like this and um and more and more youth working together you know trying to build um collaboration trying to channel effort to one to to each other's activities is a sign that um youth are ready and they are taking up actions you know to help the government and to help the citizen deal with um the pandemic so and, and this is a call. This is a call to um, all, all other, um, what we call, all other, um, I mean, I think this is a call to all other, um, what we call youth like us and, 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 and people in different parts of the world to, you know, to not wait for the government to take action. As a young people, we can achieve anything so far we put our mind and focus and we are working every day, you know, to achieve the goal. So I, I, I think... Uh, that is all I, I have to say. Um, and in summary, it's just like, okay, the youth in Nigeria are not sleeping. They are working every day. If you go on social media, you will see a lot, a lot of activities. Even when it comes to the celebrities, what I mean, what I mean, um, so, um, that is all. Yeah, Azala, I will, since you are um, a student of environment also, you, last time we met in a big environment uh, um, conference in Delhi, it was all related about the sustainability education. So uh, I'd like to ask you that how you think that um, this COVID-19 is impacting on environment? Just a few words I'd like to hear from you because you are a student of environment. Okay, yeah, I'm a student of environment. I'm doing my environment. I'm doing my master's in environmental sciences, actually. Um, I think COVID-19 has taught us a lot of things about the environment when it comes to climate change, when it comes to um, water quality, when it comes to hygiene, when it comes to um, environmental health in general. Because now we have, um, you know, we have more cleaner waters, we have more cleaner, uh, cleaner atmosphere, we have more the pollution level is quite low. You know, uh, there was a report recently about Delhi, like even um, there is no sign of uh, fog or any, or any, any uh, the, the pollution dropped to, I think I've forgotten the statistic, but it dropped to the lowest that it could, that no one could have thought, thought of. So COVID-19 has um, taught us a lot about the, 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 the environment, like, and it has, it, has, it has taught us a new way of life, you know, because, you know, you, before you think um, some industry, some companies, some activities cannot be shut down, you know. You think like, you know, for the first time in, 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 in history, for the first time in history, we have the crude oil, the crude oil, which contributes to the majority of the pollution in the sea, which contributes to the major issues, the global issues in the world. We have the prices drop to negative, you know. So... Somebody is sending message in the group. Uh, maybe they 
Okay, you just who is Ranjit? I... Hello, Adala. Yeah. Yeah. Please. So, um, so we should um, what um, we should so so which is which contribute to um, the majority of pollution in the sea. And we have the price drop to negative. So that shows us that even without crude oil, without uh, crude oil, people can survive, people can live. And we have situation about people now, because they are staying at home. They have gardens in, 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 in they, 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 they have gardens, they, they, they started gardening in their, what we call, in their, in, in their compounds, you know, they are growing vegetables, they are growing tomatoes, they are growing stuff like that, themselves. So I, I, I think um, this, COVID-19 pandemic has really taught us that we can take care of our environment, we can minimize pollution, people will survive, you know, we can, uh, we can improve the quality of water, you know, we can minimize the pollution in, in, in the water and there will be no big problem. So I, I think in, 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 in nutshell, the COVID-19 has taught us two things that is quite very important. One is that it has taught us that change is possible, that anything can be changed and anything, any way of life can be changed. And the second is that um, we should not wait for anything. We should not wait for situations like this, for pandemic like this, to make us change our way so that the next generation, you know, will benefit. We have a good environment. We have a good nature to explore. And, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll benefit a lot from the nature. Thank you. Thank you, Adala. It was very nice uh, presentation from you. You just uh, spoke in very good way regarding also the situation of Nigeria and then how Nigerian youths are uh, do, um, helping the government to find, fight against COVID-19. It's really a good learning from Nigerian youth to us that they are just helping um, selflessly to the government. Um, um, we're trying to connect with Rhoda. If uh, Rhoda is in good network, we'll try to... Rhoda, are you hearing us? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Rhoda, please. Okay. Yeah, please, because your network fluctuates. So I'd like to request you to put your words on behalf of Kenya. Um, I have none so far. So can you continue without it? Uh, yes, Rhoda, excuse me. Okay, I got none so far. Can we continue without it? Please. Yeah, yeah. Continue without video, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, so okay. So, can I start? Yeah, please. So, good morning, everyone. So yeah, we're here. Is... Yeah, okay, okay. My name is Rhoda. I'm a student at the University of Nairobi, Kenya. I'm taking a conflict and peace studies and also a combination of political science and public administration. So I've been asked to speak on, on the role of on the role of youth in combating COVID nineteen Kenya. Are you getting me? Yeah yeah we are getting you. Okay, so somebody is kind of abusing us in the group. Okay, check in the chat. Somebody called us, you are from fool, God will punish you. And you're away from that. <laughs> so the youths in Kenya are very active. Since the start of this pandemic, the youths have taken the first role and they have played a very vital role in combating COVID-19. Uh, as I've told you, we are the young generation and we have always been labeled as the super spreaders of novel coronavirus. And here in Kenya, our health ministry labeled the youths as um, the most pictures, you know. We are the carriers of this virus, but we're not succumbing to the disease because we got the strong immunity and we are very energetic according to, to the youths, okay? So, but uh, when we take it to the old people, with the very weak immunity, the later die, while we, the youths, were surviving. 
So due to that, the young activists and volunteers across the globe, and especially in Kenya, and let me say East Africa, they're generating ideas and energy to save countless lives. Uh, for example, in, uh, in Kenya, youth have been involved in uh, informal settlement, the use of morals to educate people. You know, in slants, they rarely get the information. One, they don't have the televisions, they can't afford the radios and even the cell phones, the mobile phones. So the youth in the areas who have the information have been used to spread the information to the rest. Uh, secondly, youth have also been using the talents such as drawing, composing music, poems, and all that, you know, to spread the message and to spread the awareness. Can also use of entertainment. Some youths have also composed very good songs, right from the directive measures on how to prevent yourself from the coronavirus to how you can keep safe. And I guess that has been a very great milestone. Are we together? Hello? Uh, for your Hello? Um, for joining despite the uh, network. Hello, Roda? Yes, you're getting me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So again, I'm also saying that uh, the youths have been supporting members of the community. Okay? We've yeah. been supporting members of the community yeah. uh, using their grassroots mm -hmm. organization. They've been using the aid to provide to the vulnerable people in the community. That is the old people who are either suffering from, those are the victims of HIV and AIDS, you know, they got no energy to work for themselves. And those who have not properly been assisted by the government, the youth have taken up the role to assist them. Uh, the other idea is that uh, the youth have also been handling misinformation, spreading the truth, and kicking out myth and misconception about the spread of the coronavirus. The other presenter said, people have the idea and the mentality of when you get coronavirus, that's the end of your life. But no, the youth have taken up the role of spreading the correct information and the ideas about these novel coronavirus. The media as well, being guided by the youth, have also taken up the role you know, the subscription that provides people with regular services and helpful, helpful information. And also, I've taken the awareness to spread the awareness that how we can prevent ourselves, always to wear a mask, to avoid such, uh, uh, to enhance social distancing, and also stop stigmatization to the people who are veiled or to those who have been to quarantine facilities. Uh, that is all what I heard for now. Thank you, Rhoda. Okay. Yeah, Rhoda, um, um, we are very glad that you joined. We, we know that Kenya has enjoyed relatively stable government despite turbulent in 1982 and 2007 election. It's good, good hearing from you, from Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, you joined uh, despite... Um, you said that today network is not so good. Uh, in the meantime, yeah. I would like to apologize, uh, apologize, uh, Mr. Azala. I uh, he informed us that someone um, in the name of Rohit who joined the today's webinar abused him privately in the message. So, uh, dear friends, I would like to uh, heartily request you. We are in this very serious situation uh, of pandemic, and uh, this webinar is not a joke here. So. We are just uh, sharing our experiences. We are learning from how African uh, youths are uh, contributing to their government, to the country. So in that, uh, in that context, uh, um, I would like to um, request you all that please patiently um, um, hear to the speakers who have joined all across uh, the um, continent. They are from Africa continent. They joined us to share their experiences. I hope the experiences uh, they, are, uh, they are sharing with us uh, will have an uh, impactful, um, impactful uh, um, situation on us. So not wasting much of the time, I would like my friend 
Gerson to um, Gerson Dagawa, who is from Ghana, so to speak on how Ghana is doing with COVID-19, how um, uh, everything is over in Ghana and how the youth are playing active role in Ghana. Uh, up to you, Gerson. Thank you, Mr. Abinov. Uh, it's been a long time, and I'm very happy to connect again. Yeah. 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 And currently, currently, I'm a student in India and observing the coronavirus from India, Ghana, and then West Africa as a whole, West Africa and East Africa. Yeah. So we are all aware to this uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2, which started from Hebei province in China. Uh, in the initial stages, uh, it spread to USA uh, and then to to Europe. So all of us uh, in Africans we were just wondering why the virus was not coming to Africa. There was brouhaha and a lot of uh, information. But later in the month, uh, the virus got to Africa, and currently we have about 400 cases in Africa as a whole. And uh, in the context of Ghana, we have. Uh, Currently, we have 17,000 cases, uh, and but the active cases we have is only 4,000 because about 14,000 people have recovered from the virus in Ghana, as I speak to you. So, speaking to the role of the youth in combating COVID-19, uh, as we from history we know that a lot of uh, youth people have done uh, a lot of things during pandemics like this. Like we can make mention of Vladimir Lenin of Russia during the Russia Revolution. He did a lot to, 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 to bring Russia to where they are now. We can also men make mention of Mazzini of Italy. And so many uh, over the continents of Africa, of Asia, of everywhere, youth have done a lot of things in, in the combat against uh, pandemics such as uh, COVID-19. So in the context of Ghana, uh, we have our minister, Kodi Opon Kuma, who is, uh, he himself is a youth and he's the minister of information. So his leadership in, 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 in influencing other youths to also uh, take up the fight against COVID-19 has been very impactful in the context of Ghana. So as I speak to you now, currently Ghana has uh, 4,000 active cases. And before, Ghana was... I think number four with a lot of COVID-19 cases. And in Africa, Ghana is number two in the conduct of uh, testing. Ghana did a lot of testing. Ghana is just, uh, we have 33 million population. So Ghana is a very small uh, country in West Africa. So first of all, what we did was that uh, Ghana did a lot of testing with the able leadership of our youth minister, who is himself a youth. So we did a lot of testing and then regularly, this minister uh, comes to Facebook, Twitter, and other social media handles. He conducts from time to time, uh, he, he talks about COVID-19, uh, the dangers of COVID-19, how people have to adhere to the uh, social distancing protocol, the regular hygiene protocol, how people should not be, uh, be sticking themselves to uh, false informations that have uh, become the thing in the world. As you know, currently we have two viruses. We don't have only COVID-19, we have two viruses. We have coronavirus and fake news. So the, the solution to these two viruses is accurate information. So in that area, the youth of Ghana has been very instrumental. We have a couple of civil, civil society organizations and other NGOs. We have uh, the Global Shapers of the World Economic Forum, who from time to time conducts Facebook and Twitter uh, live stream. They tell people about the, giving them the right information about COVID-19 because of the abundance of inaccurate information and other conspiracy theories. So with that aspect, the information, giving the accurate information, Ghana has been very instrumental. And then another area is that uh, there are a lot of people in Ghana who depends on day-to-day uh, -day, day -day living. They have to go to the streets they are street markets. They have to sell on the streets uh, before they can make uh, um, their food for the day. All these people, because of the COVID-19, and they, they have to adhere to COVID-19 uh, protocols. All these people have been out of business. So what the youth of Ghana has been doing is that uh, they organize um, 
from time to time, they organize the sharing of uh, food on the streets. And we have a lot of people, NGOs, we have um, other um, civil society organizations. We also even have musicians. There are popular musicians in Ghana who have been involved in the fight, of, uh, the fight against COVID-19. So what they do is that they go to, uh, they target poor areas in Ghana. So they go there and they share food to uh, people because these people cannot, cannot go to the streets and sell to get money to buy food to eat. So the youth has been very active. You know, Ghana is one of the countries with a uh, uh, youthful population. So, and the youth are one of the people who have been impacted by this COVID-19. We can look at universities and other institutions. They are all youthful people and all these people are out of school now. And, you know, and they are also contributing the fight against COVID-19. As I, I made mention in the, in the spread of accurate information and then going to the streets to uh, chef, they partner with organizations to share food with uh, people. So in the context of Ghana, uh, this activism on the part of the youth has resulted in the recovery of about 13,000 uh, COVID-19 positive patients. So currently Ghana have only 4,000 uh, COVID-19 cases. Uh, thank you, and Gerson, you from Ghana, the country of gold, and yes. you know, the gold price has rise uh, huge in global market these days. So this was all about, all from the four uh, speakers. Um, uh, unfortunately, we could not uh, get the speakers from Somalia, uh, but he, um, I think he has some technical problems but if, uh, if anyone any speaker from somalia is in this um, webinar can you just message us because most of the mics are uh, muted here that's why i want to uh, if uh, a speaker from somalia is in you can just um, uh, just message us in chat box and if any of the friend has any question to our speakers especially we have now two speakers Azala and Gerson they will be uh, they will be replying to your questions if you do have um, then you are welcome uh, to the question uh, session any of the friends if you have any question Okay, if um, um, if you don't have any question, then I do have some questions to a speaker. If um, Gerson is um, Gerson is interested to um, reply on that, Ms. Gerson, I would like just like uh, uh, in many of the countries, then in pandemic situations, and there comes like uh, there is some cases of. Um, uh, rising cases of uh, mental health you know in our country like Nepal also um, we have uh, uh, there is a huge number of suicide cases in Nepal um, in this pandemic situation so um, have you gone through this kind of situation there in um, Ghana or African countries like people are suffering from mental health they have been uh, facing psychological problems uh, can you just just yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, so currently I'm in India and I've been listening to uh, the, I've been watching from the internet. So uh, what I'm, I'm, I'm privy to is that a lot of people, when the media engage them, they try to talk about the fact that uh, staying at home and not going out to uh, the markets and even not going out to see their friends, they have been de depressed because they have not been to this kind of situation before. So as a result, this tries to give us the picture that definitely there are a lot of people who are going through mental problems. So what the government of Ghana has been doing is that the Ministry of Information has a section that has been devoted to solve these issues because the media has brought the picture on this kind of issue. So uh, the mental health um, section of the Ghana Health Service have been put in place, have been put in place measures so that they can get to these people. So what they do is that from time to time, um, they have this kind of mobile system 
when they, they go around, when the media bring the attention to these kind of issues, the mobile, this is in the form of a car where they go around to uh, advise people on, 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 on the uh, effect of COVID-19, especially on mental health issues. So they try to tell them that, no, this is just a temporary issue. This is not a permanent issue. And uh, with, with their cooperation and be them abiding by all the informations that has been given by the government, they will be able to go through this kind of issues. So the government have been have been very very um, active in in, the, in in giving people the right information so that they will be able to come out of these meta meta issues. And also, civil society organizations and other NGOs have also uh, uh, responding have also been responding to this kind of uh, issues that come in the media about people saying that they have been dispersed and they have meta issues. So this thing currently uh, is. Is, is actually working in Ghana, and I'm very sure it, it is part of it. It has also accounted for the recovery of 13,000 people in Ghana currently. Hello, if Adala, you are available there, then um, for, first of all, I will um, uh, like to apologize on behalf of organizers that uh, some unidentified people came to the uh, enter to the conference and then in between um, uh, he abused you. So I'm sorry on uh, on that ground, but um, I, I would like to uh, I would like to ask you that as a youth leader and you say you are a very good motivator as well i have heard your speeches in delhi then i've heard your speeches in chennai so uh, as i would like to request that what you do you suggest today's youth to uh, utilize this uh, lockdown time when they have not so much of things to do they have not so much of things like to go outside, like to visit places, I would like to request you that how do you suggest, what do you suggest today's youth to engage themselves um, um, in this pandemic situation? Okay. okay. Um, thank you for, for having me back. Thank you for having me back. Um, um, first of all, uh, um, now we have a free time, like you have, we are having free times and we, we can do a lot. First thing I want is that this is the time for all to develop our career, both academically and professionally. You know, um, these days we have courses on, you know, free courses online. Um, I think we can uh, spend our time to engage in those courses, you know, get the needed certificates that, it may, that you think it will help your career in either way, whether professionally or academically. You know, uh, that will help yeah. our career either professionally or academically. So I think it's very, very important so that we use this opportunity to, you know, as well, you can use this opportunity to, you know, to build our social profile. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is meant for professional, what we call professional people. We can use the opportunity to connect with people, build networks, you know, um, we can use it to do a lot, a lot as, as young people. So we should not let this, because this is one of the, let me say, this is one of the special free time we are having. We don't know, I don't pray we should have another pandemic. And so I don't pray we should have an, another pandemic because we don't know when this kind of free time will still come again. So I'm not praying for another pandemic, but I'm just saying that, okay, this is a very good time so that uh, for us to use wisely to build our career, to engage in, even if it's sport activities, if it's going to be exercise, if it's going to be something that will build your mental health, that will build your physical physique, physique, that will build anything that you think that you need, this is the right time to do it. Both the speaker, um, Agarsan and Azala, um, actually, we we know uh, we had a very good time with you. Uh, you spoke very well on the 
uh, on the situation we are discussing. So I will now I would like to, we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Sunil Kumar Manandar. Uh, he is former Environment Minister as well of Nepal, and he is an environment activist um, as well. Um, he is advisor of Land Our Future uh, brand movement campaign. Um, he is um, he is advisor of. Uh, Land Our Future and Land Our Future is one of the organizing partner of today's program. So, sir, I would like to hear um, hear uh, a bit of you also from you also, like um, on today's webinar and also a bit like uh, how uh, Nepal and Africa has been developing the relation. Okay, uh, thank you, Avinia. Uh Good afternoon, and I'm very happy that uh, this is first time. Uh, we are sharing our views with uh, uh, with our friends from uh, Africa, especially from East Africa and West Africa. And uh, I'm very happy that I got chance to know uh, some information uh, from that area, uh, how they are uh, facing uh, this uh, pandemic problem, and at the same time, how they are coping with this. And I'm, I'm also happy that uh, uh, some African countries are doing uh, good and uh, the situation is not uh, as serious as uh, we are facing in our region. So once again, uh, thank you all the, uh, um, all the speakers from um, East Africa and uh, West Africa. Uh, and also once again, would like to thank you, uh, Abhinav, uh, giving me a chance uh, to share my views uh, in this occasion. So uh, uh, I think it is uh, uh, good to uh, share uh, at the beginning, that uh, uh, just today's uh, information uh, in general, uh, in worldwide case, uh, there is uh, about uh, 5.8 million uh, confirmed uh, COVID-19 uh, positive cases. It's a huge number. And dead cases are uh, 500,000. So this is uh, the global scenario. And uh, Nepal is uh, just uh, uh, bordering with India. So uh, I would also like to inform you what is the situation in India also. Uh, in India, the confirmed cases are more than 600,000. Um, and dead cases are uh, around 17,000. So now come to the Nepal. Uh, so our confirmed cases are about uh, 14,000. And dead cases are uh, 30. So dead, uh, dead cases are 30 and uh, confirmed cases are around uh, 14,000. Uh, so this is the scenario, um, the way, uh, the global scenario, uh, uh, scenario in Nepal and India. And uh, uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, due to the, this uh, lockdown situation, uh, as everywhere, we are also facing unprecedented uh, hardship. Life is practically disrupted. Although uh, nowadays we have a lockdown, but uh, many, uh, you can say that many reliefs are uh, going on. So it is, a, you can say it's a loose type of uh, lockdown. Uh, even after the long period of uh, lockdown, mm, like confirmed cases and human losses are increasing. So this is very uh, complicated situation. Um, and already, Avinov has already uh, said that the suicide case is also uh, increasing. Uh, young uh, people with frustration, and uh, this is, with, with frustration cases are also increasing. This is a very uh, serious matter uh, that we have to think. Mm, uh, here, I would like to inform you that uh, in South Asia, uh, about 100 million, about 100 million uh, youth has already lost their job, and they are now unemployed within these three months. So you can imagine 100 million uh, youths in South Asia, they lost their job. And so uh, this is the this uh, suicide case and this uh, frustration uh, are the direct impact of this uh, economic 
uh, situation uh, that uh, we have to address uh, in coming days. Uh, this, uh, this COVID-19 pandemic is not a problem of a nation. It is not only the problem of uh, regional. It's a problem of, it's a global problem. So if the case is global, then who globally? Only uh, making a joint efforts globally, we can fight against this, uh, uh, this uh, global pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, uh, this is first time that we are uh, sharing our views with uh, friends from Africa, uh, East Africa, and uh, West Africa. Um, although the situation is uh, uh, quite different uh, from Africa to our South Asian countries. Um, I think uh, African people are uh, 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 suffering not only from uh, COVID-19, they have many types of pandemic they have already suffered. So uh, it may be very dangerous when uh, this COVID-19 will spread more fast in Africa. So the time, uh, is, this is the right time, right information, so that uh, African people can protect themselves against this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So this type of uh, sharing information will help them uh, how to cope with, and also it will help us how African people are uh, doing um, best way to cope, to fight against this type of pandemic. Uh, this is uh, one side of uh, uh, one side of the part of the coin. The another side, the another side of uh, pandemic. If you ask me, there is also a positive side. Is also there is a positive side of pandemic also. Uh, what is that positive? The nature is healing. That some African friends has already said that nature is healing. Our air is more clean. Uh, our, we have more clean environment at present. Huge reduction of uh, carbon food, footprints. Thus, uh, you can say that uh, you are directly helping to mitigate uh, climate change. Uh, so uh, this type of situation, in one side, we have a huge problem. In the other side, when it's related with environment, uh, it is, uh, uh, this pandemic is helping to us. But I'm very uh, sorry to say that uh, this uh, positive situation in environment is not because of our human efforts, but because of this uh, COVID-19, because of uh, nature. So if you ask me, this COVID-19 pandemic is a strong message that we are receiving from the nature. What is that message? The message is that if we care nature, the nature will take care of us. So uh, this message we have to follow very seriously. We must respect nature and biodiversity. Then only uh, we can cope with this type of uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And here I would like to say very clearly, the present uh, neoliberal model of development, neoliberal model of development doesn't work and will not work. We need a new social order, a new sustainable way of development nature-friendly development. If we follow this type of sustainable, nature-friendly development, then only we can cope in coming days to fight against COVID-19 pandemic and this type of pandemic in coming days. So I think that uh, youth has a huge responsibility to fight against this type of pandemic at the same time, how to protect nature, how to protect biodiversity, how to protect wildlife, because 
we are the part of biodiversity we are the part of nature we are the part of wildlife also without wildlife we cannot exist so we shouldn't forget if there is a good nature then we can survive so this philosophy that the young generation must understand and must lead towards that uh this is a good platform that organizer is creating a very good platform to sharing to share our views how this covid-19 uh, pandemic and its relation with environment uh, we can do better in coming days if we succeed to protect our nature biodiversity and our wildlife and if you ask me in one sentence that i would like to say at the end let us listen the message let us listen the message of the nature before it is too late otherwise we have to face series of covid-19 pandemic in coming days so this is a very serious message that we have to follow thank you very much avinam thank you thank you mr thank you mr sunil kumar mananda um, thank you for your good words that uh, we should care for the nature otherwise uh, we wouldn't have a life more in this earth so thank you everyone thank you for, not only we have uh, we had friends from east africa west africa we have a friend from south uh, southern part of africa also uh, jardina is uh, from southern part i like to like a um, uh, ch chance to introduce you jardina can you just unmute your mic and then um, uh, okay. give a short introduction of you Uh, good morning. Uh, so, since you're we're at the morning, I'm from Egypt. Uh, Egypt is in the upper part of uh, Africa. Of course, all my African friends know uh, Egypt. Uh, I will go through uh, the corona. I'm not prepared with it, but we are just facing a lot of uh, cases still. We are we are still at the peak. Uh, regarding the peak, we are now um, uh, about seventy uh, thousand cases. confirmed and uh, about uh, 3500 uh, deaths uh, we are facing of course a lot of obstacles uh, because we we had to open the lockdown since um, egypt now is uh, economically we had to we had to open the uh, lockdown so we just opened the two days past but uh, people has a very high uh, sense of uh, responsibility and uh, we are taking all the procedures and we wish uh, that uh, the people will uh, complete in um, <coughs> their feelings of responsibility uh, regarding egypt uh, our main resources comes from uh, tourism of course uh, so we have two ways of uh, tourism we have uh, like um, diving and so because we are on the mediterranean uh, sea and on the red sea so we have this tourism resources as uh, a part of our economic which is of course reflected by the presence of by the issue of the coronavirus uh, i don't want to take a lot of time but uh, i wish uh, all the world safety uh, africa and asia i'm so happy to uh, meet um, and my african friends and thank you um, um all my asian friends to to be introduced to you today uh we are as i told you egypt is uh, facing now uh, opening from the lockdown so we are taking all our procedures and we are expecting our uh, economic to be uh, reflected uh, later on and as dr mr sunil said uh, just we have to listen to the nature before the time goes uh, goes away so we uh, are all have to listen to the nature um and that that's from my side for today and uh, next time maybe i will be more prepared about uh, egypt and how we are uh, affected or uh, or something yeah, thank, uh, thank you. you so much mr hatina for uh, introducing me to uh, all our uh, participants today yeah, and thank you. you for inviting us thank you thank you zardina so we are at the end of the today's webinar with youth of africa uh, we were discussing on how youth are playing vital role in combating covid-19 we had a speaker from ghana mr garson dagawa he is still with us thank you mr garson my very good friend then we had peter momendo who is from who was from tanzania he spoke how tanzania is doing doing good with uh, fighting against uh covid-19 then we had uh, 
um, Mrs. Rhoda Naduki from Kenya. Um, she also spoke very good. I'm very thankful to her. She, despite of her busy schedule, she managed her. Uh, she managed herself to come to this program. Then I would like to uh, thank Mr. Narendra Prasad Joshi, who is director of South Asia Partnership Nepal. Uh, South Asia Partnership Nepal is one of the um, organizing partner of today's webinar. Then we had Sunil Kumar Manandar who is um, ex-minister of government of uh, Nepal. Uh, he's, he had an environment portfolio. Now he is a prominent environment um, leader of Nepal. And we had uh, Aluwasiya Azala from Nigeria. He spoke very good. He's a good motivator. He, um, despite he, he is busy with his thesis uh, work on uh, of his uh, postgraduate, but he managed to come to share his experiences on COVID-19. Then um, I would like to thank uh, Miss Sumaya Jaffrin for uh, for your role today in today's webinar. Thank you, Miss Sumaya Jaffrin. Uh, we wish you um, all the best in your career. Then uh, Georgina joined us with from Egypt. Uh, and then all the participants mm, who manage your time of, from your busy set schedule uh, to join this important webinar with Youth of Africa. Uh, it was also my first time I was doing uh, some program, especially with Africa. We wish uh, South Asia uh, will have better relation with Africa. In coming days, we'll have some mutual cooperation programs, especially between youth to youth. Uh, after the uh, COVID-19 situation, um, COVID-19, um, after post-COVID-19. Thank you, everyone, uh, for being uh, um, being with us. Thank you. Um, thank you for uh, joining today's webinar. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Press the bell icon.